What's up, guys? Uh, welcome to day 30, let's see, 38 uh, of my journey to 2000 ELO. Um, I'm going to get started with some puzzles and then jump into some rapid games. Maybe one or two, we'll see. Check. So maybe it's actually check the bishop. This is covered. Whoops. This is covered. That's covered. This is covered. Two, five points. Um, check. King F2. Check if we go there. It'll be King. King G3. Well, it has to stop. Seriously. Wow. I need to calculate. Check here. Or check. King D1. And then Rook C1 check. Check. F King C2. Check. Is that the best order? Check, king over, rook c8, and then I just don't see how they're stopping that, other than giving up the rook. Hey, what's up everyone? Legit Tactics, welcome, welcome back. I'm just doing some warm-ups before getting into uh, the rapid game of the day. Um, how's everyone doing tonight? Today, I'm streaming at the weirdest time. It's like 3:40 uh, in the afternoon, Denver time where I am. But I finished work early. All right. Uh, why do I feel like this is a potential smothered mate? No. Check. Doesn't seem to do anything. If we take here. Okay. Thanks. Oh, okay, so let's see. Thanks. Rook takes. Queen check. Rook back. And the queen snags. Knight with check. Because I don't think this is like... Uh, all the other pieces are just too out of the game okay hmm not what i expected do we have here this knight has no checks the queen has to move i'm not going to sacrifice the queen for nothing um queen just back to e6 makes a little bit of sense and then king takes i don't know d6 this bishop just sucks like yeah i need to open up the bishop this rook's out of the game i'm threatening to take that bishop but i feel like with these kinds of puzzles that's just not hate puzzles recently like am i missing something here why why queen c7 to go to e5 like what the hell is this puzzle okay i guess okay to keep defending the knight jeez my brain is just like freaking Check here. Should be like a checkmate pattern here. Check. Check. Checkmate. Uh, what? Why? What other option do I have here? Oh my god.
Oh boy. Here, queen f1. Let me slide the queen in. The king can never get in. Excuse me. Pardon me. All right. Um... This move looks appealing for sure, because we're hitting two things at once. Oh boy, that's scary though. <laughs> Let's see. But queen h5, this threat is more immediate, so either the rook goes back. If rook back. So we just take and threaten me. Turn the music down a little bit. Um. Wait, check here, check. King H7, rook check, no. The king gets out, I was gonna say maybe that's the, maybe that's it, but it's not. Right? Check here, check, check. And the king gets away. Check. Check. Dude, no way is it that complicated. <laughs> I'm hoping it's not, because if we go queen h5, how does black defend this? Rook. F rook f8. And then take, we're threatening this. There's no way, right? Takes, takes, check. They wouldn't ask for that much. Here, there, check. No, 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 because can, he can escape. Threaten mate. Okay. So we have this um, e5, queen e5 check. Hmm. then they're probably they can either block with a queen because let's see they got two rooks and a bishop versus yeah one rook a bishop and a knight uh so trading queens is not what we're going for oh i can also just take right but here takes yeah i think it's that um are we grab with the pawn probably because after the rook moves after rook f8 bishop takes h7 king e7 we're winning the queen either way so pawn takes okay that's not what i would have expected just giving me the rook for free mm, but they're threatening mate so i have to be careful so check Check either king e7 or king e d7. If e7, we have this bishop a3 check. And if d7, take e7, d7, sorry. We have this check. Uh, well, it has to be takes first. Okay, so no, we cannot grab the rook obviously we have to address this mate threat wait what am i talking about was it hallucinating i don't what, what am i talking oh oh and then force trade of queens cool i've been like stuck at 2600 for so long in puzzles i really need to get my get my act together all right um Check, bishop takes. We don't have... Oh, no, sorry, hold on. Rook h6 check. Come back. 
Rook a5 check. But then aren't they just escaping? There has to be a check here, I think. And this obviously doesn't work, so I'm just guessing here that we have to start with that. Here. Oh, check. Okay, so there's this, but I'm not sure if it's worth it. Takes, takes, check. Pick up the rook. I mean, we are winning, and I don't think there's any checkmates here. Let's see. Boom. Boom. Um. King e3, we're threatening both pieces. The rook needs to slide back, either to b2 or a2. And then... We are... Okay, so we slide over here because then we're also threatening... No, we're, it's not May yet because they can escape. Check. No, that doesn't do anything. Check. Bishop takes. Or... Hold on a sec. We take here, we're threatening... Yeah, but then he can just go bishop c4. I was gonna say, otherwise he'd be threatening... Rookie six checkmate, right? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, no. Because that's covered by the rook. The so yeah, here we'll just now we just need to okay, sweet. All right, I'll stop there for the puzzles. Went back over twenty six hundred. I'm gonna do a couple um, of my those Jeremy Silman puzzles. These are positional puzzles. Um, what's going on here? Oh, okay, this problem shows the student. The correct way to conquer a square, this may not seem important, but such a minor strategy is often enough to pick up the full point. White has more que uh, queenside space, and this might lead one to be believe that he has a superior position. However, the opposite turns out to be true. How can Black demonstrate his stuff? Um, sorry, you guys probably can't read all of this, but basically it just has a little like chat from Mr. Silman. Okay, so White has more queenside space. Um might lead one to believe that he has a superior position. However, the opposite turns out to be true. So black is winning and something about conquering a square. Conquering a square. Such a minor strategy. All right, so that's kind of like this description here is a little bit more vague than some of them. Um... Hmm. Because there's other appealing moves, like just bishop g4. It's pretty appealing there. You know, just develops the bishop. or threatening rook d8. Hitting the queen as well. Uh, um, yeah, that doesn't look as good. Well, that... Are we maybe just... Wanting to jump our knight? This knight, like, what the hell is a knight doing here? So maybe... Jumping the knight in. But. Takes. To, I mean, no, that doesn't make sense either. Hmm. I am not sure. What square? That's the question. 
Like the only square I can see fighting for is the D4 square. Um... So again, if anyone is like hasn't seen these puzzles, these are not really tactical puzzles. There's not going to be like a, you know, I don't know, like a knight sack and then like whatever. There's not going to be a lot of sacrifices. It's just positional stuff. Um, otherwise, I might start looking for tactical things, but uh, if I go bishop g4, is there any way to add more pressure to this pin? Like that's what I would look for, but I don't think that there is. Um... And bishop e6, we're hitting that uh, c4 pawn, but he could just go like bishop b3, and then he's looking pretty good there. Jeez. Uh, I don't know. Instinctively, I want to say it's either knight e6 or the bishop's coming out somewhere, but this knight is really like, it's got to get into the game. So knight e6. Doesn't make sense. Let's 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 see. I've, I've done enough thinking. Knight e6 is the most natural move in the position by bringing the knight to e6. Block aims to aims at the critically weak d4 square. Yes. Uh, as tasty as this is, as tasty as this is, the immediate knight move turns out to be inaccurate. All right. Well then. Ah. Oh, okay. So Bishop g4 was right in the first place. Bishop g4 prepares to trade a black piece that has nothing to do with the d4 square for a white piece that has one of d4 majors. D4's major defenders. Once this exchange is made, black can then play knight e6 with an invasion on the d4. Okay, so this is like interesting because um, bishop g4 is tempting just because this knight, like it, the bishop can't come and unpin. Uh, this knight can't come and like defend. There's no knight that can come to like d2. So like this pin is kind of permanent and they can, they can't play h3 um, kind of forcing you, but what this puzzle is explaining is that it's all about this weak... God, I wish I could highlight the squares. It's all about the weak... I'm going to do that. Hold on. So I can, like, show as we go along here. Um, it's all about this weak d4 square. So even if they did go h, uh, h3, I think the computer is going to say... Oh, the computer does, doesn't say to take, so... Um, it is one of the lines, but the best line is to go bishop h5. What... Just like keep that permanent pin and if they go here i guess we're just going to keep that pin yeah interesting so i had a comment on the youtube video someone was saying they were doing some of these jeremy Sullivan puzzles and that often the computer didn't seem to agree um this is not something that you know mr Sullivan himself is saying that like if h3 then you take but he is saying that it's all about this d4 square and he kind of suggests here that uh we can undermine that we can exchange our white bishop that has nothing to do with this square so that now we are threatening to jump our knight in there um but it looks like the computer isn't really loving that actually because h3 is the top line and then the top line here is to actually just go back back to bishop h5 which is interesting because it they're gonna i think they're gonna play g4 and so their computer is saying to keep that pin i bet there's a way to to win that knight because that's just like a permanent pin. I mean, the, the king could slide up, but... Anyways, interesting. Interesting. Let's go again. The simple position from an English opening has come up many times and in amateur circles has been botched on a number of occasions. What's the best way for white to complete his development? White has central space and a grip on D5, on the D5 square. Although black's pawn on E6 stops white from ever placing a piece there. Of course, all good things come with a price tag and this position is no exception. In exchange for that space, white has forced to give up the D4 square. How should the first player complete his development? So it's white to move. This comes from an English. Uh, uh, so yeah, we've given up the D4 square and like the question is, what's the best way for white to complete his development? Um, well, I mean, 94 just keeps an eye on that square, right? But even then after like 94, Wait, 94, sorry, 92, 94 takes, takes, or even bishop takes, I don't know. Um, obviously we can't play d4, 
this just kind of increases our weakness i want to say i mean it's e3 opens up the bishop but it seems to really want something to be done about this um d4 square so we can't push i just think maybe i don't know knight e2 is better um because it's keeping that bishop open instead of blocking the bishop but let's try and figure out find out i'm not an english player so oh, there we go you're right uh knight g to e2 is the most comfortable square for this knight and certainly the most flexible move at white's disposal with knight g to e2 white develops prayers to castle hits the uh, d4 square keeps his position for f2 f4 open that's another thing i didn't mention i think this looks more appealing because um we probably would want to play f4 at some point uh this is something that i have noticed um i would say in the last like like 100 150 elo um one really common theme i don't know about you guys but is not just playing knight f3 or knight c3 if i know that i'm gonna want to use that c pawn or that f pawn because oftentimes especially in like london system positions or Karokan positions that are very similar oftentimes the best move when there's like no obvious move and the move that's going to give the person the advantage is like playing f4 or f5 whoever gets f4 and five at first um has that slight edge because you know they're attacking so if you play knight f3 that's kind of stopping that um whereas you know the queen yeah blocks the queen but the queen probably wants to come out here anyways to either i don't know like c2 or c3 um so anyways makes some sense all right uh geez i should be doing if i'm doing like my full you know course load uh for studying i should be doing like some end game exercises practicing for my end game book what else going over openings um I think that I'm, I think I have the energy to go over my openings just really quickly. You know what? No, I'm be a lazy piece of crap. If I have time to play later, I'll do that, but I'm just going to go jump straight into a rapid game. If you made it to the end, thank you guys for watching. Um, this is a new idea I have where I'm going to start just putting out like the training and studying that I'm doing to reach 2000 ELO. And then I will put the separate videos of the actual rapid games that I play. I'm open to, uh, you know, your guys' thoughts and opinions. It seems like the video that I just recently made on uh, how I'm actually studying and what I'm doing to try to reach that goal. Uh, seems like it did pretty well. So let me know what you guys think. I'm happy to, you know, throw in some more content. Like maybe I'll do, you know, right now I just did puzzles, but maybe I'll be doing like more end game practice, some of those drills. Maybe I'll take, you know, the like Jeremy Silman uh, end game book and go over it a little bit. So if you guys like that, let me know. And um, otherwise, you can also check out the daily rapid game that I'll put out like alongside every day. Again, thank you for watching. Hit the like and subscribe button if you like this stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.